Point-of-care ultrasound of the gallbladder can detect gallstones and signs of acute cholecystitis. Here's an example of the image we hope to generate with this scan. In the image, you can see gallbladder, portal vein, and common bile duct. Patients are generally in a supine position for most point-of-care scans, including the gallbladder exam. However, if your patient can cooperate, you can help optimize the gallbladder visualization by asking him to lie on his left side. Select the curved array or abdominal probe and hold the probe in the sagittal orientation. Ensure that the probe marker is directed toward the patient's head. Start your examination with the probe in the midline of the abdomen just below the xiphoid process. Identify the liver. You may need to slide the probe to place the liver in the upper portion of the screen. Slide the probe laterally along the costal margin until the portal vein comes into view. The portal vein is your landmark. You should identify it before proceeding to the next step. From the portal vein, follow the interlobar fissure until you locate the gallbladder, which is generally obvious from its bulbous shape and large size. Remember that the gallbladder may have any orientation. It will not necessarily lie in longitudinal. Thus, you may need to tilt and rotate the probe clockwise or counterclockwise with fine movements until the gallbladder is seen in its true long axis. You can confirm that it is the gallbladder by finding the exclamation point sign. Next, sweep through the gallbladder. Then rotate your probe 90 degrees to view the gallbladder in its short axis and sweep once more. Ensure you visualize all the way down to the neck of the gallbladder. Keep on the lookout for stones. Gallstones will appear as bright, echogenic round structures with a dark acoustic shadow below them. Next, measure the gallbladder wall thickness. You must do so on the anterior wall of the gallbladder, which is the area nearest the top of the screen. This is best seen in the transverse or short axis orientation. Remember that this means transverse to the gallbladder and will not necessarily be transverse to the patient. You should also test for a sonographic Murphy sign. This is an acute tenderness on compression of the gallbladder with your ultrasound probe. To test for this, find the fundus of the gallbladder with the ultrasound and apply pressure here. A positive sonographic Murphy's is found if this is the point of maximal tenderness. Gallstones, if they are present, will appear as echogenic round structures inside the gallbladder and cast a prominent shadow. Notice the black shadow behind the gallstones imaged here. Gallstones are usually mobile, so you will notice that they move with patient movement, unless they are lodged in the neck of the gallbladder. Cholecystitis is a clinical diagnosis, which includes your clinical judgment and the following POCUS findings. A positive sonographic Murphy sign, anterior gallbladder wall thickness of more than 3 mm, and pericholecystic fluid. Remember when measuring the gallbladder wall thickness, first position the probe so that you are imaging the gallbladder in the transverse or short axis orientation. A gallbladder wall thickness greater than 3 mm is considered abnormal and is a feature of acute cholecystitis. Some common pitfalls to watch out for when imaging the gallbladder include false positive findings due to gallbladder wall thickness, edge artifacts, gallbladder sludge, and gallbladder polyps. Gallbladder wall thickness can be increased in the following states acute and chronic cholecystitis, but also cirrhosis and other causes of ascites, viral hepatitis, congestive heart failure, hypoalbuminemia, chronic renal failure, HIV, pancreatitis, and a contracted gallbladder, such as in a non-fasting state. Sludge in the gallbladder can be mistaken for stones, but more commonly, artifact can look like sludge. Artifact will disappear with probe movement and sludge will not. When imaging gallstones, watch out for polyps in the gallbladder. They may look like stones, but a careful assessment will show that usually the shadows aren't as dark and they aren't mobile. In order to practice gallbladder ultrasound safely, you also need to be aware of false negative findings. These include a calculus cholecystitis. Though rare, it does happen and the mortality is relatively high as it usually occurs in critically ill patients. If you suspect it, consult a surgeon regardless of the ultrasound findings. Wall echo shadow or WESS sign occurs when gallstones entirely fill the lumen of the gallbladder, obliterating the gallbladder wall that is your landmark. The west sign is characterized by the echogenic gallbladder wall, the more echolucent gallbladder filled with bile, and the large shadow from the stone. This can be misinterpreted as bowel. A gangrenous gallbladder will have air in the gallbladder wall lumen, thus distorting the ultrasound waves and making it difficult to visualize the gallbladder. A stone in the neck of the gallbladder is easy to miss if the neck is not properly visualized. Small stones might be missed. Consider scanning the patient in two or three different positions to visualize the gallbladder better. Cholidocolithiasis can only be confirmed by the finding of a dilated common bile duct. 
so a normal appearing gallbladder on POCUS does not rule this out. If you're having trouble identifying the gallbladder, try positioning the patient on his or her left side. Consider a high-lying gallbladder, in which case you will have to scan between the ribs. You can also ask the patient to hold a deep breath, as this will shift the gallbladder down and into the field of view. If the patient has recently eaten, the gallbladder may be contracted and very difficult to image. If possible, wait several hours and repeat the procedure when the gallbladder contains more bile. Ensure they haven't had their gallbladder removed, otherwise you'll waste a lot of time. To help differentiate the gallbladder from a vessel, like the IVC or portal vein, you can use color Doppler to confirm that there is no flow in the suspected sac. Since this can be an uncomfortable exam, don't hesitate to give analgesia. You will then be able to gently push in the right upper quadrant and generate a better image.